That's at Titi Marai in 1996. That looked like a, a bigger protest than the, it is currently. You yeah. Go, eh? And after that was when the police blocked the bridge and they had the standoff where the, they wouldn't let e people across. My mother, Sarah Alexander, she went to art school when she was still 16 in Auckland. She went to Elam when she was, well, she was very artistic. And also my father, he was at Elam as a, as a part-time student studying sign writing because he went into sign writing. Here we go. Oops. <laughs> so I'm one of these cute, odd people whose both parents went to Elam, but I'm self-taught. <laughs> so I, I obviously have this artistic thing from both sides, but I went into photography. He is a pathfinder who captured the most iconic moments in our recent history. This is the man behind the lens, John Miller, Kai Whakahua Māori. Make it believable and keep it true. Wahine Māori are hardwired to think about what's good for people. I know that my lived experience can help so many others. The photographs, the record of how divisive that period was. I never stand up there and say, I speak for all Māori. I just uh, try to do the best I could with something that I could do well. I'd like to do that. Mark. No, Mark, Mark. Oh, that's to sync the two cameras up. Mm. Just for me, just angle your chair towards the camera a bit more. This way. Yeah, nice. Mm. Oh, sorry, too much. Here oh, back a bit. Ko Waitangi te awa, ko te ahu ahu te maonga, ko tauwhara te marae, oku hapu, ko uh, nai te waka ki te tua whenua, te uri tanifa me te whiu, ko Napuhi nui tonu. What to you is the perfect photo? I think the composition is really important. It doesn't matter how sophisticated the camera is, it's sort of how it's used. And that was the thing about film. Film, you had to exercise a certain amount of discipline because, you know, you only had 36 exposures in your camera, or if you had a, a roll film camera, you had between 12 and 8, depending on the size of the film gate. One disadvantage of digital, it, d it doesn't uh, give you a discipline that film does. I wainganui i ngā tau whetu te kau ki ngā tau rua mano, i haka tutu te puehu puta noa i te motu. Ko ngā whakāhua nā John, hei maumaharatanga ki te hunga i tū ki te whakahe i ngā kaupapapehi i a ngai Māori i tangata ke atu hoki. Is it one? Yeah. It's the one, it's the one on the top. Um, the, one, one the, one, the one up there, yeah. the one up there. Um, right. So th this is a new ring binder? Yeah, a new yeah. ring binder. It's called, um, it's just got a blank sheet on it. There's no writing. Okay, how about giving it a label, John? Like just a or B or something so we can... Okay, I'll just there. write B on it. Okay, yep. yeah. Okay, and the overall description of the, of the ring binder? Colour slides of the 90s. Colour negatives. Colour negs. Document sleeve. Yep, negative holder, three strips of six. My young radiator at about age four, that's her there. I think it's around 1995-ish, I think. Yep. 
We're going through my negative collection. Uh, it's been an ongoing process where we're sort of um, making a database of what images I have and what form they are and whether they're black and white, colour negatives, colour slides and sort of how many there are and what not. So we've got an idea of what I've got. Well, in my very young years, I grew up on the North Shore of Auckland. Then, when I was still very young, my mother went teaching and uh, we moved up to Northland. I did start taking photographs on my mother's old box brownie cameras around 1965. And then at the end of 1965, she generously purchased me a quite a good camera which had controls. You could focus it, you could set the shutter speeds, and you could set the diaphragm so you, you could make good pictures with it. The first time I did some serious documentary photography was 1967, when I was in Auckland, when I was in between year 11 and year 12. I borrowed a 35mm camera from my uh, uncle and photographed a anti-Vietnam War protest in the Lower Albert Street. But it wasn't until I went to Victoria University that um, I really uh, joined in with other folks and photographing a lot of the protests that were going on at the time. You'd get student newspapers from overseas and you'd, you'd, you discovered new sources of information which questioned sort of what the New Zealand Herald was printing or the Dominion was printing. So you, you were able to make a judgment on the validity of fighting wars in Vietnam or compulsory military service. And, and, and that, at that period of time, there were very big protests in the streets, usually Friday nights, involving quite a cross-section of society. I think I had a natural curiosity to um, record events, and um, you know, it, so it seemed to be something that I liked doing. That strip of three should belong in that... Well, I've, I've, yeah. Is there someone that comes to mind who you've photographed the most in the last 50 years? Well, I've noticed that Tommy Eti seems to prop up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I've got him sort of Robert Waitangi sort of marching in anti-war protest. Got shots of him in a land march. Oh, and of course I've got the ones of him at the top of steps of Parliament in November 72. <laughs> I was photographing him again in Wellington last month. He's been involved in things for 50 years, you know, so, you know, I've got heaps of him. Uh, uh, いたとこやなてめいこるまたなたもとあ、あ、てらぺな、え、もう、もてあふたな、もて、ちくわちきてわはなきゃや。あ、けこらいやいやいや、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、
Ai, ai, kai te hare, kai te huna hare, te suku kai e te... E wera kōrua ana wera. E, e mau mahara anō ke au nei pira te kōrua a wetahe o nga tānata. A, I teira ki tōna pai tēne hoa, kai te pai nohongo tēne hoa. E nē, e pai nē ai a. A, e kene pe a, kai te mahi ke mā te ture. A, e he, ngā re te tika we nga kōrua, kā ka mōhio a hau. My mother, Sarah Alexander, was her maiden name, from a, a large family up in, from a Kaihau. Her mother passed away when my mother was nine, and that was the Māori side of the family. So we've had to sort of do our own journey to get back to our Māori side. You had this concentration on, you know, how much fraction you were, you know, were you half or quarter or whatever, um, you had this sort of attitude, you know, that, oh, you, if you're not more than half, you're not a real Māori. My grandmother was seven-eighths Māori, which made my mother seven-sixteenths Māori, which makes me seven-thirty-seconds Māori. They used to have a census question on this, what degree of Māori are you? And so I, I would have great fun with these putting seven-thirty-seconds on the, this particular box. I reira te hārena mai o John ki te whakāhu hāre ue tōna whakāhu e te rā wā. Ki te hopu i a mātau i tā huatano, tā mātau nga noho tana, nōhana tana i reira. E nari, nō nā marama i muri mai, puta noa i te marama hepetama a koe rā te i pitano ki te kōrua a mātau ka nā tamatoa, te tēneti me te pesihana. Me nā āwana wana, koe rā te tau i katahio nau ka ki te tini te nui o nai tātau i karera tau mōhe ki te reo. I tō rātau mamai hoki, me tō rātau nga tangi hoki mō tērā whakawhiukuru nei I was born in my life, and I was born in my life, and I was born in my life. It's interesting to note that most of the folks in Ngā Tamatoa did not have great ability with the language. I think in 1972, probably Tame Iti was the only one who was really fluent, you know, and everyone else was sort of still catching up, you know. Uh, you know, Hannah, Hannah was, uh, she wasn't very good at the language, but it didn't diminish her zeal to her, her determination that a future generation of Māori uh, rangatahi should have access to the language, because in our day, the language was not really not recognised in the educational system. And a previous generation were punished for speaking, and you know, there are various anecdotes of, uh, of people being beaten uh, for speaking it in the, in the school, in the schoolyard. Koe rā te āhuatano o te pitiana. Koe te āhuatano o te pitiana i rūne i nā whakawhiu i a mātau e tamariki ana. A tērā mō te tuhiti i a word not speak Māori. Koe rā nā nā tohu tohu a te... O te mātau nā tāna o te motu i tērā wā, ki nā tamariki ke. E tērā ki te aukati i te tēnā o te ona tamariki. Ke kore rātau e kore i te rō. Tērā wā e ki ana rātau, kāre he whai rawa o te o tāu nga reo. Ko tāna ko tāna i tāia tu i reira, nā nai hopuru ki tako mōhe nga whakāhua. MAI protest march over the Harbour Bridge Early 1998. So they walked over the Harbour Bridge. Yeah. Well, no, they drove over the Harbour oh, Bridge, okay. but but some of the pe some of the people in the cars yeah. stopped and they leapt out yeah. and started running. And um, yeah. I had my small daughter with me. She's looking out the window. All these cops diving on people on the yeah. Harbour Bridge, arresting them. Yeah. <laughs> it's very dramatic. Yeah. Oops. Oh, there's someone being dragged off on the. There's a police car with a Tino Rangatira flag sticker on it next to the next to the number plate. Oh. <laughs> it's a bit difficult to see, but it, it's there. Did you find yourself ever chanting as well uh, behind the camera, or were you? No, quite... no, no. You're really concentrating on technical things, you know. 
I was still resident in Wellington in late 1970 when uh, this young chap, Poata Eruera, turned up. And um, his older brother, Toda Eruera, was one of the founders of Ngā Tamatua. And uh, he was travelling around to just let people know that there was this new sort of activist, young activist Māori group that had been established. I just remember this long, gangly figure strewn out across the grass in the front row, listening to everything going on. And then every now and again he showed up with a camera. But that was the first meeting with John Miller. It was just a total nuisance. And, you know, I mean, we're talking the 70s, early 70s. We had no idea of, at the time, of the value of the work that he was doing. You know, he was just a, he was a nuisance, but he wasn't, you know, a, a totally intolerable nuisance. <laughs> so at that time, the ha factor was higher than the value factor. Spluttering from? Oh, cough. No. More than that. More than that. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say that you know, even though we love his photographs, I'm still not entirely comfortable with the process. At the time, you don't really think about the importance of these images. It's only sort of many years down the track that you find that these images do in fact become valuable. Uh, for example, the um, set of images I took of Ngā Tamatoa 50 years ago, which um, uh, the folks in New Plymouth did a very lovely display for the I Am Hana exhibition. That was a great tribute for Hana, that, actually. I was very pleased to see how they used my photographs on those big sort of display panels, you know, about I was 50, curious 50 years down the track. What you thought of it? Mm. I was asked which is my favourite. Well, it's the Waitangi one with, to me, Hana, me, Donna. Oh, yes, and Roy Mata. Roy Mata Roy Mata Sinclair. Sinclair. How it got to be the favourite was because it's the one that my kids really like. Oh, OK, right, yeah, 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 yeah. And so that's going down, gone to the next generation now, it's on oh, walls yeah, in their yeah, houses. Yeah, yeah. Oh, OK, yeah, 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 yeah. Nā te hononga o John ki ngā tamatoa, karuku hōhunu ia ki te ao tutsunga puehu Māori. Heri te tonu tana hoki hoki ki te mura o te ahi, o ngā whakatena tena iwi taketake o te motu. I te tutu te pehu ki wānanu i ātātau e te rā koe rā te wā i, 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 te, I te tīmata tana o mātau o, o nā tamatoa. I te rā, te rā ki te whakatitu pehu me o mātau nā āwana wana ko mātau nā rangatahi te rā wā. I tō mātau noho pauri ki nā whakaisi tana o, o te ao ki te... Ki uh, nga tangata e whenua o Tamotu, uh, tērā i nga whakawhiu ki Amerika, ki uh, nga tangata e whenua reira, ki te, ke te iwi mangu mangu, uh, uh, huri, huri noa ki te ao. Ke te komohio, nāna i mahi i whakāhua a hau i roto i nga hikoe tana i roto i nga rima te kautau. You've got events like the, the 1975 Māori Land March, which I photographed at the Wellington end. And, you know, there were very familiar faces, and Dave Ruru and his little daughter, Tania, being pushed down the highway uh, to Wellington in her pushchair, and um, Tama Iti and, uh, of course, Fina Cooper leading it. Um, and then I saw the next generation back, like Joe Hawke, Whitty McMath, Willie Wilson from Rotorua, younger people like Cyril Chapman, 
And you know, it's just uh, interesting that you know, all these people took part in these um, historical events. I na hari na ki waitangi te hari na o te o te hiki koe o te o te mata kiti o te roa te ra te tau tahi mana i wera fiti te kau mari ma te tau be te poro te hoki i te te hari na mai o te te o pe fiti poro o te tona Afrika. I i ra i kato i rote na hiki koe tana. Kita nak tahu kita ibu rekod ma, huru nua ina fakat itu perkita na irote ite ite mahu, ibira irote ite tahu fikir ite kau, ono ite kau, fikir waru ite kau, ibu ite kau, kait ite mahu itu na ite nama. Sometimes there are events that have been rather unpleasant, but I felt um, for the historical record. It's important to be photographing there, for an example being the Springbok tour, which was in a dreadfully confrontational time. But, um, you know, the photographs that I took at the time remain as a, a, a sort of a record of how divisive that period was. Me, me taku kite ano i kite ano i rote i nga poro te he o te o te mea o te o te Springbok tour. Tutu ana te pehu, hari ana te pakana, ina ni kano hupu mai tonu a John Ireira, a hako a kai te rere na aku hatu, kai te kai te tutu te pehu, a kano hupu mai paku paku ana tana tana kamera i te te rawa. There was an incident during the Hamilton match, which famously was disrupted by the protesters um, breaking into the ground and stopping the match. I had gone ahead of the march to the boundary fence. I was photographing into the crowd. When I saw the sudden flurry of movement of the protest rushing towards the fence, and I was in between them and the fence, and I was about to be mincemeat if I didn't jump very quickly out of the way, and uh, which I did, as everyone thundered into the fence and started behind me and started pulling it down. Anyway, there's this big hole in the fence, so I just wandered through, and I bumped into my old friend Roger Steele. I thought, oh, good, this Roger, I can, a friend I can buddy up to in this sea of very grumpy rugby fans. I only had about half a dozen photos left in my camera because I badly misjudged the amount of film that I'd need. So anyway, I just got these long shots of the of the protest and the smoke bombs and the police and and the la the final photograph I took before I ran out of film completely was the chairman of the Citizens Association for Racial Equality, Tom Newnham, being escorted off the field by a couple of police and he had a very mischievous grin on his face. And uh, then I ran out of film. You had the rugby commentator commentating the protest as if it was a rugby match. So, and so, ah, the Reds quite a much, and, da, 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 and, the, and the crowd are chanting, we want rugby, we want rugby, da, 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 da. We've never seen anything like this before in the history of our country. And anyway, the commissioner of police pulled the plug on the whole match and it was cancelled. We were surrounded by these people saying, where's a protest? Oh, I want to demonstrate. Roger said, it's a dark day for New Zealand. And I said, yes, it's disgraceful. I can't believe this. So we had to, we had to do this um, bogus conversation to sort of camouflage ourselves uh, in the middle of these very angry people who, if they'd realised our affiliations, would have probably beaten the shit out of us. Civil order had broken down and people, it was sort of, it was the law of the jungle, people getting beaten up. Uh, no one seemed to be able to stop it. Um, and it was a very scary sort of situation. It was very, very nasty.
And these images follow on from this one on the wall as the march heading up to the treaty grounds approached the Waitangi River Bridge to be confronted with this block of police with their riot helmets on, which completely stopped any further passage to the other side. So um, that was as far as the march got. That's a police video camera person there, it's because they so they're probably some sort of VHS um, camera. I just call it the, the, the Battle of the Bridges or something because it's, that's um, what happened um, to that particular protest that year. I think the, uh, the authorities were probably worried that the protest would sort of occupy the grounds and um, try and stop the ceremony from going ahead. There's a lot of stories in those pictures, and he knows most of them. So there's whole worlds in those pictures, and a lot of those worlds came from doing those things, like it wasn't just a photography, it was helping the people with whatever they needed, you know, and um, there's value was built up that way. あ、なまひ一時期ひこえちゃうけえ、ちょんまや。あ、なえねこもひらたあ、え、まひとなたた。what do you hope John Miller's legacy will be in the next 50 years? Mm, well, I just hope that my images, wherever they are stored, will continue to be accessed mm -hmm. and they will be uh, part of the um, visual history of this country and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. and, various Māori iwi that I photographed are going to be able to have access to them and they will continue to be available for people to um, access and have and derive enjoyment from. It's very precious to have this Māori identity because you feel you belong to this long history of um, occupation of this country. It's really how you choose to identify, you know, whether you actively identify with that side of your whakapapa. And I've sort of done that by photographing in that world. I'm pleased that I'm recognised as a you know, photographer of, of, you know, Māori descent, you know, taking photos in that world. Um, yeah. <laughs>